Hey there aviation enthusiasts, it's your buddy Michael from Nocturnal Simulations and I'm here to drop some knowledge bombs on you. Today we're going to hit you up with the top 10 tips that every new pilot in the sim needs to know. Now I've spent more time tinkering with these things than a mad scientist, so I'm practically an expert by now. And I'm sharing my wisdom with you to make your journey into the world of flight simulation a little less bumpy. So buckle up and hold on tight because we're about to dive into some serious knowledge bombs. Alright, listen up newbie pilots. Once you've had the thrill of your first flight, probably your first crash, it's time to get serious and make your flight simulator look as amazing as possible. And how do you do that, you ask? By optimizing your computer's hardware settings, of course. Now, I know it can be a bit overwhelming at first, but fear not. Many of us seasoned veterans have been down this road before and have shared our wisdom to help you out. The easiest tool you can use is the built-in frame counter. It's like a virtual fitness tracker for your simulator. To enable it, just go to the general options and turn on developer mode. Then, enable the in-game FPS counter on the debug menu dropdown. Simple, right? Now, I won't go too deep into details on how to use this tool just yet, but I'll give you a little tip. Your CPU can only handle so much before it hits a bottleneck. So, if you want to achieve a smooth 30 frames per second, you need to keep your system delay to 33 milliseconds or below. Now go forth and optimize, and remember, the sky's the limit, unless you hit that pesky ceiling, of course. If you're anything like me, those darn nameplates in the sim can be a real eyesore. But I've got a solution that'll make your life a whole lot easier. What I like to do is disable those suckers by default. But I've also got a nifty little trick up my sleeve. I've keybound the option to enable and disable the nameplates on the fly, pun intended. That way, when I'm flying with buddies and need to keep an eye on them, I can quickly turn them on. And when I want to snap that perfect screenshot, I can turn them off easily. I've bound mine to Control plus Alt plus N. So it's not something I'll accidentally hit mid-flight. And trust me, it's a real lifesaver. No more cluttered screens or accidentally covering up that breathtaking view with a bunch of nameplates. So give ahead and try and thank me later. All right, next up on our list of flight sim hacks, disabling those pesky point of interest icons. Now I know what you're thinking, but wait, won't I miss out on all the cool stuff if I just turn them off? Well, sure, if you want to take the easy way out. But what's the fun in that? Personally, I like to keep them turned off because it frees up my screen from any annoying distractions. Plus, there's something pretty darn satisfying about navigating to a point of interest all on your own, without any handholding from the sim. Now, here is the downside. You'll have to make the decision to turn them on or off in the options menu, because unfortunately there's no key binding option available right now. But hey, a few extra clicks never hurt anybody, right? So go ahead and disable those points of interest icons and take on the challenge of finding them yourself. You might just surprise yourself what you're capable of. Attention all PMDG fanatics and lovers of other planes with similar issues. If you've been frustrated by wonky click spots on your beloved 737, never fear because Michael is here and I've got a fix that'll save you from pulling your hair out. First things first, make sure that that lens correction option in your graphics settings is turned off. Trust me, this little tweak will make all the difference in the world. You'll no longer be left scratching your head wondering why the APU suddenly decided to turn on when all you wanted to do was turn on your landing lights. With the lens correction option disabled, you can expect much more consistent click spots. So you can focus on the important things like flying the daggone plane. Let's go ahead, make the change, and say goodbye to those pesky click spot issues once and for all. Coming in at number five on our list of must know tips for new pilots, it's all about those multiplayer settings. Now, if you're serious about getting into the multiplayer scene, I highly recommend checking out my video linked below for a more in-depth look. But for now, let's cover the basics. First things first, make sure you're on the same server as your flying buddies. Trust me, you don't want to be that guy flying around on a different server wondering why no one's ever able to see you. Once you're all on the same page, head on over to the map screen and click on flight conditions. From there, adjust your settings accordingly, set multiplayer to all players, turn off air traffic because who needs AI planes when you've got real pilots to fly with, and make sure weather and time are set to life. That way, you'll all be flying in the same conditions, and nobody can use the old, but my weather was different excuse when they crash. And that's it. Follow these simple steps, and you'll be soaring with the best of them in no time. Hey, hey, fellow sim enthusiast. If you've picked up some new tips or just plain old enjoying the content, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, and come hang out with us on the Discord server. We're a friendly bunch over there, always happy to chat about our latest flights and exchange tips and tricks. And let's be real. The more the merrier, right? So spread the word and help us build this awesome community of simmers. And who knows, you might even make some new flying buddies along the way. Let's move on to number six. For those of you who haven't ventured into the world of third party mods outside of the marketplace, or if you've never added a mod at all, this one's for you. Finding your community folder can be a little bit tricky depending on where you bought the simulator from. If you're like me and use the default location for your installation, you can find it here. For the Windows Store install, check this out. For the Steam install, check this out. An important thing to note is that Windows 10 likes to hide the app data folder by default, so you'll need to go to view in the menu of the file explorer and select hidden items to make it visible. 
And for those of you who use the custom location for your flight simulator installation, well, you're on your own. Just kidding. You'll need to proceed to that custom location, which in my example case was the following. Next up, let's talk about how to actually install those sweet add-ons into your community folder. First off, you'll want to locate the zip file you downloaded, and if you're using the default Windows unzipper, go ahead and unzip that file, being sure not to bury the main folder under another one. But if you're like me and prefer a little extra zip in your life, try using a third-party program like 7-Zip to speed things up. Just drag and drop the folder from 7-Zip into your community folder, fire up the sim, and you'll be soaring through the skies with your new mods in no time. Let's move on to number eight, where I have a treat for all you newbies out there. If you're just starting out with Microsoft Flight Simulator and the idea of flying seems as daunting as assembling IKEA furniture, fear not. The WB Sim and JP Logistics 152 mod is here to help you out. Download link is available below. With this mod, you'll have the perfect plane to learn classic VOR, DME navigation, or if you prefer modern technology, you can install the PMS50 GTN750. Everything in the plane is simulated and is an amazing trainer, even on VATSIM. This is also the plane that we use on our Thursday night group flights where we've flown everything from cross country, over water, and even bush flying. You'll not only learn a lot, but you'll also have fun doing it. It's like learning how to drive a car, but way cooler. If you've been following my channel for long enough, you probably know I'm head over wheels for this airplane. As a special treat, I challenge you to test your skills with short field landings using this aircraft. If you're feeling competitive, share your attempts and show off your piloting skills on our Discord. We'll either be in awe or rolling on the floor laughing. Trust us, we're laughing with you, not at you. Here we are in number nine. At some point, you may start feeling like you're just aimlessly flying around with no real purpose. I mean, it's cool and all, but where's the challenge, right? Fortunately, there is a buttload of solutions. There are plenty of online communities out there that can help you find your calling in the virtual skies. Whether you want to mingle with fellow flight enthusiasts on our Discord server or take it up a notch and fly on VATSIM for a more realistic experience, or even join a virtual airline and live your dreams of being a commercial pilot, there's something out there for everyone. So don't be shy, come join us and discover a whole new world of virtual aviation. Let's wrap things up with number 10, the most crucial tip for virtual pilots, learning your aircraft. The beauty of flight simming is having access to countless planes, but the downside is you need to put in the effort to learn each one. Sure, they all fly, they all go from point A to point B, but you'll want to know the ins and outs of your chosen aircraft to avoid crashing into a mountain. Plus, when things go wrong, and they will, you'll be able to troubleshoot and fix the issue. So hit the book, scour the internet, or tune in to informative content like this channel to learn all about your plane. And if you plan on flying on VATSIM, don't be that guy who has the ATC rolling their eyes in disbelief at your lack of knowledge of the aircraft. Alright folks, I know there are countless other topics we could yap about, but I think I'll let you catch your breath for now. Hope you had a blast with this episode, and as always, keep the blue side up and the greasy side down. Happy flying, and see you next time.